Keiji Nishitani was one of the most influential recent Eastern philosophers in the world. He was born in 1900 in Japan and died in 1990. In 1924, Nishitani received a PhD from Kyoto University, which is a well-known Japanese school that studies East Asian culture and religion and integrates Western religious and philosophical ideas into their curriculum. Thirteen years after he graduated, he studied for two years in Freiburg under Martin Heidegger. Shortly after that, he received the Principal Chair of Philosophy and Religion at Kyoto University. Besides being a student under Heidegger, Nishitani was a disciple of Nishida, founder of Kyoto University. He also read the Bible and was influenced by existential philosophers like Friedrich Nietzsche and Fyodor Dostoevsky. Nishitani, however, considered himself to be a Zen Buddhist. Before learning the philosophy of Keiji Nishitani, some distinctions need to be made about the essential differences in thought between the East and West. To start, in Eastern culture, the idea of unity or that all is one directly opposes the Western notion of subject-object dualism. In Buddhism, the harmonious web of interrelations of all things on earth evidences the idea that all is one and that nothing exists without relationship to something else. Dave is saying that the part is in the whole and the whole is in the part. Man is not seen as lord over the world as in the West, but only a small part in the universe of being and non-being. Also in the West, there is less reliance on rational scientific thinking and there is more emphasis on mysticism and the divine. Nishitani viewed Western scientism as a thing that transformed nature into a completely material and mechanical world. He argued that reducing something methodically to the nearest atom implies that we understand small details of existence, but we fail to see the big picture. He goes on to say this viewpoint ignores important philosophical questions like why there's something rather than nothing. Nishitani, as opposed to the mainstream contemporary West, rejected scientism as a sufficient explanation of the world and held to his belief in the divine. His idea of God, however, was much different than what the Western perspective of God. Buddhists consider coming into contact with the supernatural to only be experienced and only to be studied on an individual level, free of the contamination of religious institutions. In other words, the Eastern understanding of the divine leaves it up to the individual to decide whom or what that being is. Finally, Eastern and Western thought vary on how they view the ego or the mind. One of the most important themes throughout Nishitani's writing is the idea of absolute nothingness. Absolute nothingness is not theism, nor is it atheism. Nishitani stated that nothingness cannot even be considered something. It is the point called nirvana, which literally means cessation. Here there is no importance, value, significance, or interest. It refers to the end of passion, aggression, and ignorance. Nishitani writes extensively on the importance of destroying the ego because the ego complicates things and manipulates them into how people want them to be rather than accepting things as they are. This way of thinking that claims that the mind is something to be conquered or destroyed differs from the view of the famous American philosopher John Dewey who claimed that all thinking is problem solving and the mind is to be listened to, not quieted. Nishitani taught the opposite, complete annihilation of the self. Keiji Nishitani may be called an existentialist of all the existentialists. Because of his background and his roots in Zen Buddhism, he provides an interesting perspective on five major themes, alienation, the crowd, free will, authentic existence, and death. Keiji Nishitani believed to some extent alienation was a result of not being able to really know someone completely. In his book Religion and Nothingness, he says, A friend remains originally and essentially a stranger and unknown. Nishitani spoke those words in the context of absolute abyss or nothingness. In absolute nothingness, people do not know anything for certain because everything is complete nothingness, and inside of nothingness, there is no knowledge. For example, think of someone you considered a friend whom you thought you knew very well until he or she backstabbed you. That friend did something very contrary to their personality and alienated you in order to feel more superior in front of their other friends. He or she became someone you have never known them to be before. This is because people cannot be fully understood. This is one reason individuals become alienated. 
Nishitani talks more directly on the topic of alienation in his book on Buddhism. In this book he states, but behind them, manifestations of human alienation, lies the deterioration of relations between the members of the family due to the fact that they are deprived of mutual trust. In this statement, Nishitani argues that at the core of alienation is a loss of mutual trust. This loss of mutual trust in the context is between family members. However, the issue can also be applied to society as a whole. Nonconformists are usually alienated because they do not trust social norms and common values. For example, in December of 1955, Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat on a bus to a white passenger. This act of defiance shows that she did not trust the 1950s American society because it discriminated against blacks. In a society that normalized discrimination, she stood apart defiantly and thus became alienated because of her distrust. Loss of distrust within a family or society alienates the individual. In Nishitani's view, alienation to a lesser degree is a result of not being able to really know someone on an intimate level as shown by the statement that a friend and a stranger are completely unknown. To a greater degree, alienation is a deprivation of mutual trust between individuals or between an individual and society. Keiji Nishitani had a much different perspective on the crowd than most Western existentialists. Although he valued individuality, he did not fully accept Kierkegaard's notion that the crowd is untrue, nor did he believe Nietzsche's idea that the only road to authenticity is through radical individualism and rejection of the herd. Instead, Nishitani, consistent with his Eastern background, valued the community and collectiveness in society, not long-term isolation. Nishitani believed that collectiveness is a very crucial aspect of all existence and therefore the community is to be valued. In Religion and Nothingness, Nishitani says on the topic of unity in nature, No waves exist apart from their water, nor does water exist apart from its waves. Nishitani makes a point here that nothing in nature, even something as simple as waves and water, can exist completely independently of the original form. Waves cannot exist apart from the water, and water cannot exist apart from the waves. For this reason, a person cannot be separated from his original form, the human race. Also in religion and nothingness, Nishitani speaks to the value of community, saying, The standpoint of the person invariably implies a reciprocity that can only come into being through a fashioning of a community of persons, a commonwealth event. The Eastern idea of reciprocity is related to the reciprocity Confucius talks about in his concept of connectedness of society. Webster's Dictionary defines reciprocity as mutual dependence. Because people are mutually dependent on one another, a community is necessary in order to connect them. Nishitani rejects radical individualism and permanent isolation because it defies nature where everything exists in its original form in unison. He also rejects seclusion because people mutually depend on each other. Nishitani went even further with the importance of collectiveness and community when he explained the significance of love. Nishitani talks about love in terms of Christianity when he mentions how Jesus taught to love your neighbor as yourself. In Religion and Nothingness, Nishitani describes divine love this way. It is the non-differentiating love that makes the sun to rise on the good and the bad alike. According to Nishitani, just as God does not discriminate with his love, we are to love one another without differentiation. The idea of non-differentiating love ties directly into the Zen Buddhist idea of unity and equality. Later on in Religion and Nothingness, Nishitani brings home the idea saying this, True equality, on the contrary, comes about in what we might call the reciprocal interchange of absolute inequality such that the self and the other stand simultaneously in the position of absolute master and absolute servant with regard to one another. It is an equality of love. Love equalizes individuals in a community. Nishitani not only emphasizes the importance of community, but also teaches that love causes people to view all individuals as equals. Additionally, he shows that submission to everyone through service shows love. The image of loving service to all is far removed from Kierkegaard's rejection of the crowd. Nishitani indeed goes against the grain of existentialism when he argues the importance of the community, the crowd, rather than the dangers of it. 
First, Nishitani points to the importance of unity in nature with the example of waves and water. Then he puts forth that people mutually depend on one another, and therefore it is necessary for people to form communities rather than to isolate themselves. Lastly, Nishitani shows the significant role love plays in creating unity and equality in the community.